My colleagues in the world of virology are morbidly enthusiastic about the recent outbreak of swine flu. Many relish the opportunity to explore a new scientific phenomenon, while others are just hoping that it kills off the mouth-breathing groin punchers who bullied them in high school. Comparisons have been drawn to the infamous 1918 Spanish influenza outbreak that killed millions of people, causing many Americans today to fear the worst. And I'm here to tell you that for a variety of reasons, 2009 will not be a year of panic. Reason number one, trench foot. Most Americans do not suffer from this affliction of the foot that soldiers fighting in the trenches of World War I had to contend with. In the Journal of Virology in 2004, Professor de Veluth and colleagues showed conclusively that trench foot weakened the host immune system sufficiently to increase flu mortality. Therefore, many of the deaths associated with the 1918 outbreak can be avoided for the foreseeable future, as it looks like our men and women in the armed forces will be fighting in deserts well into the next century. <laughs> It should also be pointed out that with the decrease of soldiers in European trenches comes a commiserate drop in the population of what historians refer to as filthy French whores, whose tantalizing charms and quirky immunity ravaging venereal diseases were certainly comorbid with the Spanish influenza. Reason number two, 1918 was a seminal year for women's suffrage. It was previously thought that women played a critical role in human-to-human -human spread of the flu. And no, it was not through menstruation as was previously reported. That was simply an unfortunate and wildly improbable contamination of the test subjects. <laughs> Rather, it has been suggested that commensal bacteria in the oral cavity of women eliminate a potential entry niche site for the flu virus. This actually decreases the permissivity and spread of the virus through normal speech. Uh, and David, so, I'm sorry, to, to clarify, are you implying that women speaking more today decreases the likelihood of pandemic flu? Uh, let me be very clear here, JR. Yes. No longer should we consider the shoe gossip and penile ruminations of Charlotte, Samantha, Barbaro, and Miranda as <laughs> idle chatter designed to portray women as vapid and materialistic succubae, but rather as a vital defense against the incursion of the flu virus. For each syllable of cocktail slurred invective, they encourage women everywhere to fight for our health. <laughs> and finally, I move to the third reason we are safe in 2009. Superiority. Quite simply, <laughs> people died from the flu in 1918 because 1918 was essentially the Dark Ages, a brutal and ignorant period inhabited by thick-browed Cro-Magnons whose most notable achievements were dancing the Charleston and driving in tin cars. Remember, the definition of hygiene at the time was sharing used handkerchiefs, have a spit, leave a spit, <laughs> and mouth-to-mouth -mouth coughing. Today, we know better because scientifically speaking, we are better. With vigilance, obsessive hand-washing, and the confidence of our absolute supremacy over the knuckle-wearing knuckle-draggers of 1918, we will tell yet another Latin-born flu bug, gracias, but no gracias. Thank you, David Marino.